I just wanted to introduce myself and give a little bit of context to this video because this will be my first YouTube video. Uh, you can skip past this bit if you like. Um, I'll try and put the timestamp on the screen. I'm not really sure how to do that, but I'll try and figure it out. So my name's Lucy, I have a place to study paramedic science at uni start in September 2020. I've not even started the course yet, so I'm definitely not an expert on the course or interviews or anything like that. Um, I want to make that really clear. Um, I'm just sharing my inexperience as a successful applicant because this is exactly the sort of video that I'd have loved to watch about a year ago and I feel like there's not that much available on YouTube at the moment. Going forwards, I really want to make videos about the course and placements and stuff because, as I said, I could find barely anything on YouTube um, in that sort of respect. Uh, the one channel I found was called Two Ordinary Guys. I really recommend their videos. I think I've watched every single one, pretty much. And I don't think they're posting as much about paramedic science at the moment because the one that was more active of the two guys that run the channel um, switch to nursing but I still do recommend watching their videos but other than that all I've really been able to find have been like promotional videos from universities so I just thought there was a bit of a, a lack of information on YouTube so that's why I want to make videos like this. Anyways I decided I wanted to start learning how to film and edit videos now because I want to get a bit of practice before I start uni and because we've all been stuck at home because of the coronavirus I thought this was a pretty good opportunity to learn um, so I'm really sorry if the filming and the video editing is not very good. This is literally my first try, so please bear that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit about like the general things that you might want to consider if you're thinking of applying to a paramedic science course, um, just speaking from my own experience. One thing that I thought would be worth mentioning is that I live in Cumbria in the UK, so this might be specific to me, like some of it might be specific to me. One thing that's really important to be clear on is whether or not you will have needed to pass your driving license pass your driving license, pass your driving test before you start uni. Uh, some require it and some don't. And I'm talking about like a normal standard manual car license, not like the other C1 entitlement you can do. I know that to do, uh, to be able to drive ambulances and basically just bigger vehicles, you need to pass this special other test. And from what I've heard, um, most paramedics take that after they graduate. Um, but you, some unis will require you to just have a normal car license before you even start the course. Either way, it is recommended that you pass your driving test before you go to uni um, because it's really likely that you're going to need it after you leave and you apply for a job or whatever. And I think it's probably going to be quite difficult to learn to drive at the same time as you're studying. Another thing that is worth thinking about is whether you are going to need a car whilst you're at uni. Um, I know that most students don't. I didn't even think about it. I didn't. I just assumed that I didn't. But when I was when I went to uni, uh, when I went to uni open days and I spoke to the paramedic science students, they some of them said that especially in the like second and third year of their course that it was really useful to have a car because. Um, Often you might be put on a placement, like a work placement, um, an ambulance station, which can be literally in the middle of nowhere where there's no public transport. Um, so you might want to be able to drive yourself there. I know like cars are a massive cost, but I guess you've just got to look at where you're planning to go and see if it's going to be possible for you to get public transport or what you're going to do. Um, I know at my, when I went to the university that I've got a place at, um, they, the students there said that you don't actually need one, that the public transport is okay, uh, but it's just one thing that you is probably worth thinking about before you go. Another thing that I thought was worth mentioning, it's probably not relevant to that many people, but it was relevant to me, so I'm going to mention it anyway, is that if you think you have any sort of medical condition that you think might, like, make obstacles in your way, like, you know, get in your way of becoming a paramedic, you need to absolutely dig around the internet, do all your research to be clear on what it means, like, the implications of it. Um, it was not clear to me at all whether it would, like, sort of what, other things I'd have to consider when I was doing it I really did have to like really do my research um, when I was applying this sort of was nagging at the back of my brain and because I was so set on this class I'm so set on this career that I just didn't want to sort of think that anything might stop me so I did sort of put it off for ages just because I didn't want to hear any bad news and that's just really counterproductive it just means that you're going to cause yourself stress in the future and you don't want to do that 
I was in touch with a student paramedic that was in a similar situation to me, but they only found out that their medical condition would cause them a problem in the third year of their degree when they're almost finished and they're thinking about getting a job. And obviously that is much more stressful, much more frustrating. Um, so if you think that there's anything at all that'll gonna, that's gonna get in your way, you need to make yourself clear on that so you save yourself stress in the future. Right, I don't think you need to know every minute detail of what it's like to work as a paramedic, to know, you know, all of the anatomy of the human body. I mean, that's literally what you're applying to the cost for. Like, you don't, you don't need to know everything about it to start with. I do think that it is useful to have an interest in healthcare and to, you know, know vaguely at least what the job is going to be like, like what the day to day is going to be like. Um, because number one, if you're, if you go to interviews and stuff, you're going to feel so much more confident if you feel like you know your stuff and yeah, you can just talk more about it just really comfortably if you know more. Um, the other reason is that like paramedic science, doing a paramedic science degree, like a paramedic science course, it does pretty much prepare you for one job, like it's vocational. And like, there's a few different settings you can work in as a paramedic. There's a few different jobs you can have with the degree. But at the end of the day, this is a course that is preparing you for like one career. It's not like a English course or, you know, maths where you can sort of have a lot of choices. So you don't wanna, you know, get to the end, like, you know, go through all of this application and then realize, oh, maybe it's not exactly what I wanted. So you like doing all of this sort of research and making sure you know what it's gonna be like is not wasting time at all. Like if you, you know, you wanna know what you're letting yourself in for. <laughs> Um, because the university course is still relatively new, there's not that much information online, um, which is really frustrating. But um, the, like traditionally, I guess, and like how people used to sort of go into being a paramedic were through like different sort of training courses and also apprenticeships, I'm pretty sure. Um, but they're getting phased out, I think. Um, and now all aspiring paramedics are like are meant to go through the university route. So hopefully there will be be like more and more information available online. Right, if you want to read books describing the day-to-day -day of being a paramedic and sort of stories about interesting cases, I really recommend uh, Rapid Response, uh, True Stories of My Life as a Paramedic. Really enjoyed that book. Um, the Dark Side, Real Life Accounts of an NHS Paramedic. Um, oh wait, I'm not saying the authors. This one's by Lisa Walder. This one's by Andy Thompson and the third book I was going to recommend is Paramedic on the Front Lines of Medicine by Peter Canning. Um, I've read all of them books. Honestly, I got them off eBay for like two quid, like second hand, and they've just been so interesting, really like just really interesting. Especially The Dark Side is a book that sort of goes into a bit of detail about the sort of medical concepts and why sort of different like, you know, treatments and procedures for different like problems work um, in a way that's not really overwhelming, it's not confusing, they sort of just go into a little bit of detail and I found it really interesting. Other books that I have heard of but have not got around to reading yet are uh, a, Thousand, a Thousand Naked Strangers, A Paramedic's Wild Ride to the Edge and Back by Kevin Hazard, um, Can You Hear Me? A Paramedic's Encounters with Life and Death by Jake Jones and 999 My Life on the Frontline of the Ambulance Service by Dan Farnworth. He was on this morning with Philip and Holly. I really enjoyed watching that interview actually. And so I just thought I'd mention them. I've not actually got around to reading them myself, but I just thought I'd mention them anyways, like just in case. Another source of really good up-to-date information about paramedicine is the magazine Paramedic Insight. I have been subscribed to this. I've got like, I've got like three so far and I've really enjoyed like reading them. Um, you can get them delivered to where you live or you can access it online instead. Um, if you become a member of the College of Paramedics, I'm just gonna show you there. Uh, that's like the professional body for paramedics and you can become a student member, which is like discounted or you can do what I did. I became like an associate member, which is literally something that anyone can do. You don't have to be a paramedic or anything. It's literally four pounds a month or either four pounds a month or four pounds a quarter and really good value for money genuinely and um they publish a magazine uh, once a quarter I think and um, that's I think I've yeah I've almost had it for a year and I've got three so that makes sense 
they have articles about sort of new developments in procedure and equipment and like all of that etc and they have interviews and sort of like a day in the life of with um interesting paramedics like in different parts of like service I guess they also sometimes have information about student paramedics and studying paramedicine at uni. Um, I read an article that was written by a student paramedic in their first year, I think, that had struggled with their mental health after witnessing a sort of traumatic incident um, whilst on a placement. I found it really good. It just sort of gives you, well, it gave me a little bit of an insight into what it might be like to study. Um, so that's really good. And also these are really good, like, like really up to date. Like it's better than any, well, it's more up to date than any of these books obviously because they were published a little while ago. If you have a specific question that you want answered I really recommend joining like a Facebook group. I joined one called So You Want To Be A Paramedic. Um, it well it has like 21,000 members Um, you don't have to be a paramedic you don't have to be a student it's literally for anyone who just has an interest in going into it just maybe is thinking about it and they have members that are experts and members that are full-time paramedics that will answer your questions um it's just like a, a really good space where you can just ask whatever you want related to being a paramedic also if you do join in one of these groups um you can get in contact with student paramedics and full-time paramedics um which i guess is really useful if you don't actually know one in real life i know that i didn't really have anyone that was like family friends or anything like that so i know it sounds strange it sounds like a bit weird out of your comfort zone to sort of just go and contact a complete stranger and ask them for their time basically but i've done it before like a few times and like genuinely they've been so helpful to me and happy to answer my questions um, that I, I just really recommend doing that. The last thing I want to say on this is probably pretty obvious um, is to watch any documentaries on telly that you can get your hands on. Um, my favourite one is called Ambulance, it's just called Ambulance by, it's produced by the BBC and there have been a few seasons. Um, you don't even, you don't even have to be like interested in healthcare to enjoy them genuinely. Me and my, my sorry me and my family watch them all together and we just love them to bits they're just really really good right so I'm going to talk a little bit about interviews for university university interviews um what I'm going to talk about is literally just my experience I am by no means an expert on this it's literally just me talking about how it was for me um if you're applying to paramedic science, it is almost guaranteed that you're going to have some sort of interview. I know they don't have interviews for every degree course. Um, because you will be studying to eventually work in healthcare and um, facing patients, your personality is as important, probably more important than your academic um, like achievements and your predicted grades. The university that you're applying to is going to want to see that you're friendly, that you can communicate well, you know, why you are pursuing this career and your motivations and they're going to want to see that you know a little bit about the job. I think it's really likely that um, the interview that you'll have is either going to be an MMI interview, which is like a multiple mini interview, um, where you go to different stations uh, for like a really short amount of time, like, you know, something like three to eight minutes, like five minutes, and where they will sort of look for different like traits. So I went to one that had five stations that you like moved between with like a service user, so that's like a patient that asks you questions um, so and it sort of gives you the opportunity to show off your different sort of skills and talents well not talents like traits um so like depending on which station i was at they were looking for um like communication or if i was empathetic or an instance where i had done like conflict resolution like you know depending on which station you're at uh, the other style of interview that you might be faced with is a group interview and I think this is probably more likely. I've been to two of these and both times they're around 10 to 15 people, I think that's what they usually are, um, of like other applicants and there will be interviewers in the room sort of giving the group prompts and instructions and sort of seeing how everybody interacts together. Um, it, you might think it's a little bit daunting being placed in a group with like a you know a big group of strangers um, but I actually preferred it this way because the focus isn't all on you it's a little bit more relaxed and I think it sort of gives you a better opportunity to sort of show your communication skills and your personality just a bit more naturally than in a standard interview. 
it is easier to sort of sit back in these sort of interviews because of the focus isn't on you and not contribute to like sort of the activities and the discussions and this is just a massive mistake because the interviewers aren't going to be able to see what you're like um yeah so just push yourself to be as sort of extroverted even though it can be a bit uncomfortable just try and be chatty try and you know add things don't be too pushy obviously because they'll pick on up on that too that you'll be in a bit you know sorry a bit aggressive and overbearing you want to make sure you sort of get a balance but you don't want to sit quietly in the corner so I am planning on keeping this a little bit short and sweet. I will be making another video specifically on paramedic science interviews because I could literally talk for ages about this subject, you know, talking about, you know, what interviews I'll be looking for, how to prepare yourself. Um, so I will leave that for another video, I think. I don't want to squeeze too much into this one. Um, so if you're interested in that, please let me know, you know, in the comments or something like that. Um, and I will make another one at some point, I think. So if you're interested in studying paramedic science, becoming a paramedic, hi, super exciting and interesting sort of area to go into an interesting part of medicine. Um, so like well done for choosing it, I guess, or well done for thinking about choosing it. It's just really exciting. Um, I literally only made this video because this is exactly what I would have been looking for about a year ago, about two years ago. Um, so instead of sort of struggling to find this all out by myself. Um, so yeah. Anything that I've referenced in this video, I will leave in, like I will, you know, attach in the description or something like that to help you. Just to let you know in case you're interested, uh, other topics I'm planning on making videos about right now are um, videos about paramedic science interviews, like what I just said, um, what work experience and other things you can sort of do to put yourself in a good place. I'm sort of thinking maybe if you're in like year 10 or and you're already thinking about it, sort of what um, things you can put on like you know your cv or your personal statement that will be good for paramedic science and last thing would be personal statements i don't know whether that'll be useful to people so if it if you want that then let me know um because paramedic science uh, i didn't get very much advice from my school for paramedic science um personal statements because i guess it is quite a like a specific like degree it's not as broad as like maths or biology uh, so yeah, if you have any questions or suggestions, please comment on the video or you can direct message me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram name is lucy.ppp. Um, I'll be super happy to try and help you or like to try and point you in, in the direction of someone who can help you. Um, so thank you so much for watching. Um, hopefully I'll make another video soon.